Hello and welcome to this special edition of Today in Nashville. For the next half hour, we are going to take you behind the scenes and talk about some of the beautiful things that are happening at Southern Living. We had the great experience of traveling down to Birmingham, Alabama, where their headquarters are. It is such a special space. Southern Living, it's like a staple to all things in the South, right? Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And if you've ever flipped through one of the magazines, you have seen those beautiful photographs from travel, food, design, they cover it all. So we have that special treat of meeting with the head of photography to see all the things that go into making Southern Living so beautiful and so great. How fun to sort of see behind the curtain of America's favorite magazine, Southern Living. Jean, I mean, wow, the photography is in full force here for Thanksgiving. It is. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. How far do you work in advance? Well, we work, we have like three time schedules. Okay. We have, we work a year in advance for seasonal things, which okay. would mean we're shooting summer for 2020 right now. Um, we work, if we're working on Thanksgiving, on schedule for the issue. So is that like You have no idea months, what day months. it is, is do you? Months? You're always like wow. six months ahead maybe. At yes, least. Whatever. Well I love that you've got three different things that are happening all at the same time and yes. it always looks beautiful. It always well, looks you. magical. We try. Where do you sometimes cultivate your inspiration? Like how do you keep finding that like wow? Oh, everywhere walking around, we'll look at uh, other magazines, we'll look at a lot of uh, website of freelance photographers that we use, we'll kind of look and see what they've been doing, um, Instagram, you know. So same as us, yeah. but they're actually yeah. putting it into work, into a work form. We're just scrolling, you do it and yeah. use it and love it. I've gotta ask, how many different shots, just guesstimate, because I know that this is a ballpark, but how many different shots does it take to get the one shot? That is a tough question. Sometimes hundreds. Yeah. Um, you know, photographers might turn in 500 images and we'll use six. And, and that's just what they turn in yeah. um, because there's a whole other batch of images that they don't even turn in. Yeah, they've so, already weeded out the batch. They've got to do test shots and test shots and test shots and. It's like just seeing a little bit of the movement and everything that's going on here. You can see how meticulous you are and how you really curate everything. Guys, and the end result is magic. It's beautiful. We love Southern Living. Jean Clayton, thank you so much for letting us into your yes. home here and seeing <laughs> well, it's it. Great to have you. Now you know all the work that goes into those beautiful images that you see everywhere. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, so the day that we were there, they were working on Thanksgiving unbelievable how far they work ahead so you have to pick up that issue when it comes out in november and scroll through and see if you can spot the image that we were seeing shot right there right it was, so it was cool. very top secret but it was really cool yeah. and inspiring to see that by the way a photographer on staff there in one of our later southern living specials we're going to learn tips from him on making great photographs he was you telling know? us you can make Instagram look even better. So, so get, we were right? all on board with that. We were totally on board. Something else we are all on board with? Wait until you see it coming up on this special edition of Today in Nashville. Coming up, a peach sangria recipe. From the Southern Living Test Kitchen. It is going to be amazing straight from Miss Ivy when we come back. Make it your best morning ever. Live local music. Celebs. Makes good sitcoms with the most horrible people. I just feel like I'm in the right soil at the right time. And ridiculous fun. That's brilliant. Live your best life. Weekday mornings at 11 with Today in Nashville. Welcome back to our special edition of Today in Nashville, a Southern living summer. Okay, so we're going to talk about a summer drink, right? Ooh. Quite on point with us. When you think about summer in the South, don't you think of peaches? I know. It's always so hot outside. You want something that's refreshing and nice, and peaches just come to mind. We got to hang out with Ivy Odom. She is the host of Hey Y'all. It's such a cute show. You got to check it out. She gave us an easy peach sangria recipe. I'm almost giddy with excitement because we are in the Southern Living Test Kitchen, so you know this peach sangria is going to be amazing. And we get to meet Ivy. We love you. Thank you. I'm so glad that y'all are here. Yeah. You know what? Two favorite things, peaches 
and sangria. So this is going to be lovely no matter what happens. I know. Well, it's it's amazing. <laughs> it's one of my favorite recipes. I lived in Spain for a while, so sangria has a very oh, special place in my no. heart. And so do peaches because I'm a Georgia girl. Yes. Wow. Bring the two together and an ivy we trust. Okay, okay. How do we make it? It is so easy. So this is a bottle of rosé. You can use whatever kind of rosé you like. Do you think we should pick a good quality or when a sangria? See, can you do I feel a... Like it should be cheap. You right? know, yeah, I think usually the rule of thumb is cheaper because they're they tend to be a little sweeter, which is nice for sangria, and you don't want to waste your really expensive, really good rosé whenever you're going to put all yes. this other stuff right. in it. Right. Okay, good. It's going <laughs> to be doctored up anyway. Okay. Exactly. Um, sugar. Plain nice. sugar. Just plain. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is frozen lemonade concentrate that I thawed overnight, so it's that Minute Maid can that you find in the freezer section. Oh, you're it's speaking a, my language. I know, it's a little bit sweeter than normal this is lemonade. Be delicious. So nice. And then this is two things mixed together because okay. I didn't have enough cups um, peach, nectar, and vodka. Peach nectar is. We said that with like the sweetest, just peach nectar and vodka. Okay. It's, you yes, know, just sneaking that in. I love that. Peach nectar is kind of like peach juice from concentrate. Right. You can find it, if you can't find it in your juice aisle, it's in the international aisle. Oh, good, okay. Um, good to know. It's really tasty yeah, if you know we about. we see it in the, in the can in the grocery store. Yes. All right. Okay, so have you put anything on these or these are just diced? These are just sliced okay. peaches, fresh from Georgia or wherever, you know. Yes. And I know there are lots of different varieties. These are, which ones? Do you even know? I don't know. They come in th a lot of colors. Georgia, right. yellow peaches okay. is what the tag says. I'm well, not that's sure. What we're so gonna many varieties. I was like, I don't there's, know. There's the peach in the there's, vodka. There's white peaches, and those are <laughs> oh, real tasty, that's true too. too. So you're supposed to let this sit in the fridge overnight. Oh, got it. OK. And then you pull it out, ready to go. It's a great make-ahead recipe. because. Me. Oh, please do. She's real good at pouring. I love it. I, lo I love it when I have help. She's really good at pouring. This is perfect though. I know that you've done a lot of segments with baby showers and wedding showers. This is perfect. Yes, my rule of thumb is whenever you're hosting people, always have a recipe that you can make ahead. Sangria tastes better if you make it a couple of days in advance, mm. and then you just top it with a little bit of club soda because that's a nice spritz. For Kelly's for... light on the soda. Oh. Yeah, just uh, Okay, well how about no <laughs> soda? No soda. Love it. No soda, extra vodka. I like I it. it. Woo, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. cheers. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> So that's what we just love about Ivy and her Hey Y'all series. Fun. You can find it on Southern Living's YouTube channel. But she's like, listen, I love to entertain, but I got to keep it real because I'm so busy. You just right. want it easy and quick. The Minute made concentrate. I oh, mean, no. what a shortcut. I love it. Okay, we've got the cocktail, y'all. We now need the main entree. Coming up, expert grilling tips for a perfect steak. Southern Living's Bobby Melvin is breaking it all down for us when we come back. Today in Nashville rocks. There's only one place to see live local music every morning. The soundtrack to living your best life. Weekday mornings at 11 with Today in Nashville. Welcome back. Hopefully during the summer you've enjoyed a really good barbecue or two. But grilling a steak, that's mighty tasty. And we've got some tips from Southern Living on how to do it right. Absolutely. You know, it can be tricky. You just don't know. Are you getting it done right? Well, we have the test kitchen director, Robbie Melvin. He is also the host of Barbecue and A, and he gave us some tips on the perfect grilled steak. <laughs> Hey, I'm Robbie Melvin, Southern Living. Welcome to Barbecue and A 101. We're going to be talking about grilling steak. Simple, hot grill, easy seasoning, things you're going to want to make over and over in your backyard. I'm going to brush this with a little olive oil, both sides thoroughly. I've got some good coarse kosher salt, forms a really beautiful crust. And the steak in particular loves salt. It can really take a lot of it. Same with black pepper, the meat really loves it. Season them on both sides thoroughly. And you can even season your steaks up to a whole day ahead of time. It's in between 400 and 450. That's the sound you wanna hear, that sizzle. Now, I get this question a lot about what is the best steaks for grilling? Well, of course it's whatever your favorite is, but I prefer a ribeye. It's got a perfect amount of fat in it, but for feeding a crowd, this flat iron is perfect. We're gonna go eight to 10 minutes, and just give it a nice turn. Oh, you can see you've got the beautiful caramelization. 
We're gonna let that cook about another six to seven, possibly eight minutes for a nice mid-rare medium. If you like your steaks more rare, cook it about maybe five minutes on each side. We're gonna let this rest about five or 10 minutes. Now I get the question a lot, why is it important to rest a steak? You can see here these juices are kind of running around. What you want them to do is to slow down, kind of soak back into the meat. So when you slice it open, there is just maximum moisture, maximum flavor is locked inside there. I'm making a charred tomato relish to go with my flat iron steak. This has got nice herbs in it. We've got some good seasonings. We're gonna hit it with a little more salt and pepper. And I've charred these tomatoes ahead of time, also on my grill to give them more depth of flavor, good color. We're kind of spiked it with a little bit of vinegar, acidity with a nice fattiness of the meat. It goes perfectly together. Now we're gonna take some of our tomato relish. So we're just kind of gonna go right over the top there. Let me finish with a nice pinch of salt. The perfect, simple, big flavor grilled steak. Check us out on Barbecue and A. Like us, comment, share. If you're watching on YouTube, please ding that bell. It's too good not to try. <laughs> Yum, right? I am so hungry right now, Robbie. Oh my gosh, that looked amazing. Make sure you check out his show, Barbecue and A. He's amazing. Yeah, right? So good. All right, so that's on Southern Living's YouTube channel. Hey guys, the hummingbird cake. It has been around for generations, but we're going back in time and learning the origins of this cake that is still loved today. Today in Nashville rocks, live local music, the hottest restaurants. That just blew my mind. And general insanity. News team, assemble. assemble! You didn't see that coming, did you? I really didn't. Live your best life weekday mornings at 11 with Today in Nashville. Welcome back to Today in Nashville, presenting a Southern Living Summer. It is time for dessert. One of our favorite parts, and we're gonna talk about the hummingbird cake, because chances are you've had it on your family's table at right? one time or another. It all goes back to Southern Living. Now listen, over the years, people have tried to tweak it. Yeah. You know, add their little touch. But really, the original is what's so good. It's where it all started. And it started from a reader who sent in this recipe to the magazine. So finally, they started digging around to try to yeah, find out. Who is out, this person? Who is this person that started this amazing cake? Yeah, so Southern Living did some digging and they delivered. One of our favorite recipes to come out of Southern Living is the hummingbird cake. And we're about to learn the origin, how it all got started. We got Miss Nella McGough with us. So this was something one lady started and it's like lived yep. on since. Yep, in uh, February of 1978, she submitted a recipe for this hummingbird cake. And it was picked up by one of our editors at the time and put in a story making the best of bananas and was way back in the back of the issue on page 206. So, so it wasn't the even old issue. Now wait a second, you said, you said she, who is she? She is Mrs. L.H. Wiggins, and that's all we knew was her, she was from Greensboro, North Carolina, and her name was Mrs. L.H. Wiggins. So you went on a fact-finding mission. You were like, mm -hmm. who is this Miss Wiggins? Yeah. After, on the 40th anniversary, because it's the most requested recipe uh, of all time for Southern Living. And why do you think that is? I think it's the flavor profile. Uh, it's got bananas and pineapple and a cream cheese frosting and pecans and oil. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> You put it all together and it really is one of those recipes when you got bananas and they're just, they're a little too ripe. Yeah. This is the that one that makes to go the to. best. It does. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So you found out a little bit more about her. Yeah. Tell us. We, um, so we have been really started looking for her at the 35th an anniversary of the cake, but just never found anything. And so the 40th anniversary, um, Sid Evans, our editor in chief, put a call out in his editorial note, and we got two hits off of that. So two women wrote an email and said that they knew her, and from that we found out her first name was Eva. And that was really the key to the puzzle to know her first name. So then we could 
start digging, doing some digging. And what did you find? Did she ever come to realize that her recipe is the one that became iconic? Oh, She never knew. No, it's so sad. Tell us. She passed away in 1985 at the age of um, 81. Okay. So through our research, we found out, we talked to her sister, who was 96 at the time, and we talked to her only daughter and her two grandchildren. And they all confirmed that she made that cake. They don't believe she ever sent in another recipe to any other magazine. And she never sent in another one to us. See, look at this. This is so, like a true detective work at Southern Living. Right. <laughs> I love this. And yeah, it was pretty thrilling. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure pretty rewarding to her family to know that I their know. sweet mother and grandmother yes. contributed to a recipe that we all love and so sure. continues yeah. to showcase. Oh, we yeah. love it. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. What a great story. Right? And you're probably saying, I want to make the cake. Well, yeah. the recipe's on Southern Living's website. Just go to southernliving.com. So awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on this special edition of Today in Nashville. And as a reminder, Southern Living is a part of our parent organization, Meredith Corporation. You can pick up a copy of it right now on newsstands. Beautifully yeah, done. Yeah, the summer issue is out, not just there, but also online. Follow them on all the socials on Instagram. And you can see all these pieces on the YouTube channel too for Southern Living. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye.